So today my friend Jen and I are taking a day trip to Brighton. It's only the second time I've ever been to Brighton. Jen and I went in the summer for the first time. I think she'd been before. I hadn't. Fell in love. Like <laughs> Brighton is so worth the hype. And we've both been working really hard recently. I have been working most of my weekends. I've had a lot of stuff going on in my personal as well as my professional and my PhD life and it's just been really busy. So we decided to take a weekday off when it would be a little bit quieter on the trains and take a little jaunt to Brighton and I thought it might be fun to take you along with us now that I have a little bit more of my bearings. We're going to go to Lucien Yak, hopefully find some bookshops, enjoy some lunch and just have a nice chill day out. So yeah, I'm going to take you with me and hopefully you enjoy yourself as well. Also, I just noticed it in that other clip, but look at that lady moustache. No shame. I've currently got you in my uh, mug cupboard, which makes me feel a little bit like um, Gabby from Velvet Ghost. I don't know if anybody watches her, but she used to do these things called cupboard chats. <laughs> so I'm channeling my inner Gabby today. But um, before I went, I was just making myself a cup of coffee for the go because... I treated myself to a little flask the other day and I thought I'd show it to you. Um, it's this little flask, I got it out of Tiki Max. It's from a brand called Smash, which I think I looked up and you can also get it in like Argos. Um, and it's just like a little flask. <laughs> I know this is so not um, revolutionary, but obviously flasks can be quite big. So I've never bought one for coffee because they're just like a lot to hump around, but this basically fits like the perfect cup of coffee so I just make my coffee put it in here and it means I'm not going to buy any at the train station I mean, I'm not very good at pouring because if you could see down here right now I've just got all over the bunker top but now I've got a little coffee for the train oh so good and um I should just want to drink all mm. and it's just like the perfect size and it's not like really heavy to carry around and it does keep it warm so I'm like this is saving me money because otherwise I would Use my reusable cup, but buy a coffee at the station. However, this is leak proof and I can just chuck it in my bag. So I was really pleased with this purchase and I thought I would just mention if you are looking for a little one, Tiki Max has them. I don't know what the point of this segment was. Let's go to Brighton. Nice. And then I'm wearing this jumper, which is old and is called Blow. Ooh, mm. can't touch Stroke it. me, stroke oh. me, stroke me. And, and a woolly hat. Lovely. And some socks from Thought. Ah, uh, oh, they're Stroke nice. <laughs> Very good. There you go. We're wearing jeans. But everything I'm wearing, apart from like my shoes and my bag, are from charity shops. Nice. Charity shop, seventeen ninety nine. Charity shop, three ninety nine. Charity shop, I don't know, like four pounds the jumper. And I've got me gas on the go bag and my clacks boots. Excellent.
morning, it's dark outside now and I've just been filming on my iPhone all day so I'm just continuing <laughs> with that theme just to sort of wrap up the video. I know I didn't do a lot of chatting in the vlog. Um, Jen and I were just having such a nice day out and well, I don't know what there was to say to be honest. I was showing you a lot of the places we were going, hopefully give you a bit of a feel for Brighton. I had such a nice time and I thought I would polish it off by sort of showing you what I got when I was in Brighton because we did do a bit of shopping. Now the first thing I got in a charity shop called Martlets, which is a hospice. I don't know if it's just a hospice in Brighton but it was a charity shop for this hospice. And I got the most perfect gift for my mum's Christmas which is this dress from Bowdoin originally. And Bowdoin is actually, from what I'm aware, a pretty sustainable brand as it goes. And um, obviously finding it secondhand is even better because it looks in perfect condition. Like, honestly, if it's been worn, it's been taken perfect care of because it looks amazing. It's corduroy and it's just, it's my mum in a dress. Like, this is exactly the kind of thing she loves to wear. And I'm just so pleased with this find and it was £12 and Bowdoin's obviously a little bit more expensive to begin with so so pleased with that my mum's gonna love it I, I know she is and then I got myself so excited about this got myself some new Lucy and Yak dungarees in the denim so Lucy and Yak now do their traditional style dungarees which tie at the top so that you can adjust the length and they're just like a kind of baggy loose shape so they're really comfortable Oh, I can't show you. I'm so bad at this. Um, you get the gist. Um, and I think I showed myself trying some of the stuff on. I can't remember if I showed myself trying these on, maybe. Um, but yeah, they're, they're traditional dungarees in denim. I have been wanting them for a while. Jen has them and they look fantastic on her. So comfortable. I thought they'd just be my perfect, like, you know, freelance dungarees. And they're ethically, sustainably made. I talked a little bit about Lucy and Yak in my... I'm um, changing my relationship with fashion video. I've got one other pair of their dungarees and they only have a physical store in Brighton, otherwise you order online. And I did order my black ones online, but going to Brighton means you can visit the shop and it's always a lovely experience. They're so nice in there. And I'm so pleased with these. I am like 100% going to be wearing these tomorrow. I cannot wait. And then I feel like I got, oh, I got a book. I knew I got something else. I got a second hand book. It's in my backpack, which is what you're currently leaning on. So I'm just gonna grab it because obviously you'll want to see the book. And I got this in Amnesty International, which was a charity shop in um, Brighton. And it is Clan of the Cave Bear, the first book in the Earth's Children series, which I've been meaning to read forever. I did take it out of the library once on loan, then had to give it back because somebody else reserved it before I got a chance to read it. And do you know what I decided? I'm just gonna buy my own copy because it was two pounds. And I am like 99% sure I'm gonna adore this book. It's a prehistoric historical novel um, set during the time of the Neanderthals, I think. So Neanderthals coexisted with Homo sapiens for a chunk of time, but they also existed, they predate Homo sapiens as well, which is what we are. And it's set, I think, in a time in which we are coexisting because there might be early Homo sapiens and Neanderthals in it. I don't know. I did some prehistoric archaeology in my first year of university and adored it and always found it really fascinating. So I think the prospect of a series of books set during that time is so interesting. And these books come very, very highly recommended. International best-selling phenomenon, it says there on the top. So we're really, really pleased to see this because I've often seen the sequels in charity shops but never book one. So it felt meant to be, basically had the perfect day out, enjoyed every minute of it. If you've not been to Brighton, would highly, highly recommend it. It's just such a lovely town. And again, like I said, I think it's kind of worth the hype because it is quite hyped up. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed seeing a little bit of it in this vlog and you don't mind the sort of lo-fi quality of these clips. I would love to hear about your favorite places to visit in Brighton in the comments down below because I'm sure I will be visiting again, probably with Jen because she's my Brighton buddy. And until next time, happy reading. I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys.